Hello, sacred being, and welcome to the Sacred Sister Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah, and today we're switching things up. This season five is all about liberation, freedom, and thinking outside of the box of the old systems and way of doing things. So now that we are in the season five of the Hierophant, we are shifting our own things up here at Sacred Sister Podcast. And one of the ways that we are doing that is by not only having our episodes with the guest, but also adding personal episodes by Brit and me to bring you Sacred Sister Magic twice a week instead of every second week. So it's a big shift that we're moving into the season five and we are super excited for it. So this is our first personal episode. This is my first personal episode and I'm excited to start telling you about something that's been on my heart and that is in regards to channeling. What is channeling? I really want to open up dialogue about this because I've seen many different misconceptions about it and it is part of my life on such a deep level and this is what I teach my clients to, how to channel, it's so much more relevant that we might think it is. We literally channel all the time. The question is, what are we channeling? And when we are taking control of our channel, when we are becoming conscious and aware of our channel, we can step into a whole new level of leadership in this world. We can step into a whole new level of creativity, a whole new level of power, influence, impact, but also love and peace. The reason for that is when we channel, we are receiving messages from outside of our own brain activity, so to speak, (laughs) outside of our own mind. When you think of the word inspiration, in spirit, spirit is coming in to you. That is channel. Inspiration, when you feel inspired, you are channeling. Have you ever felt like you're so in the flow? You just feel like you're in front of a blank page and you can just write it all out. And it comes easy. Or you're in the flow of fixing something or cooking, redesigning your home, making love. Whatever it is, you feel that flow state. That is channeling. And so we're doing that. We're all our channels. And the question is how often and what are we channeling? So this is why I want to open up about this. Especially in times like these where there are so many channels available for us, literally. I mean, TV channels. <laughs> there are so many TV channels, YouTube channels, in general, social media channels. Literally, there's anything, any information that we ever seek to have, we can find somewhere on the internet. Any opinion that we might be looking for, we can find somewhere. And so in these times where there is so much information, like an information overload, it is so important for us to practice discernment and to also realize which channel is coming from consciousness which channel is coming from a higher consciousness, from source, and which channel is coming from a manipulated source, a contaminated source. And for that reason, I want to share with you an example that hopefully helps you to visualize what channeling really is. I like to see channeling as us being the faucet on a sink. The water that is coming through is divine life force. Well, not necessarily. 
<laughs> ideally, <laughs> ideally it is divine life force. But the what it is coming through is whatever we are channeling. Yeah, whatever messages, actions, creativity, inspirations, whatever is coming through our channel. And then there's the source. Where is the faucet plugged into? Is it plugged into the grid? Is it plugged into a natural spring source, right? Straight from Mother Earth, straight from source, straight from source consciousness? Or is it plugged into the city system, the matrix, the grid? And it makes a big difference. Just if you look at those two different sources, if you've ever had water from a natural spring, oh my gosh, it's absolutely incredible. I remember when Britt and I went to Mount Shasta and we had some, we filled up our water bottles with the river in Mount Shasta and it, oh, it was absolutely the best water I've ever tasted in my life. It was refreshing. It was tasting like life, like pure life. And this is what you feel too when you are connected to someone who is channeling from source consciousness. It feels liberating. It feels healthy. It feels good. Then let's look into the tap water, right? The water that comes out of a faucet that is connected to the grid. It's connected to a watering system that can be quite contaminated. And here in America, for example, it is advised to not drink straight from tap, to not drink that water, to not use that channel to take in fully because it's actually not healthy. There's fluoride in it. There's even a little bit of poop in there. (laughs) Bacteria, all kinds of different stuff. And... It is advised to have a filter if you are going to use the tap water. You want to filter it through first, be discerning, filter it, and really take the good out of it and leave back behind the bad stuff that's not healthy. Sometimes when we see a channel that is literally just repeating stuff from the matrix, from the grid that is coming from a contaminated source. Sometimes it is obvious. It comes out brown, (laughs) you know, like really stinky, bad water. And we can be very clear that this person is channeling stuff that is not healthy, that is not good, that you don't want to consume. However, that's when the channeling comes in as tricky because... If the tap water looks nice from the outside and it looks like perfect and it looks similar to the natural spring water, you might think that it is safe to consume. You might think that it is is healthy. You might think that it comes from source consciousness. And I think this is where the misconceptions are coming from about channeling because just because someone says that they channel from source doesn't mean that they are. And doesn't mean that they are even aware of it either. It might look like they're channeling from source. It might look like that's a good thing what they're saying. It might look like it comes from the heart. It feels authentic. It feels liberating. But in actuality, it is not. In actuality, it is contaminated. But you can't see it unless you really tune in. Unless you really tune in, intuition, tuning in. And the way that you can intuit if a channel is coming from source or not is the more that you drink straight from source, the more you know how it tastes like. So the more that you channel yourself, the more that you channel straight from source consciousness, the less anybody else can manipulate you and tell you what the truth is or tell you what the messages are or tell you what to do. 
because you are your own channel and you are connected straight to source and you recognize if anybody else is connected to source and you also recognize if somebody just pretends to be connected to source <laughs> but actually has a contaminated source of water that is coming through the channel. Another thing that can happen is, and this is our responsibility as conscious beings who are channeling consciously, the pipe or the faucet that the water runs through can be dirty, can be full of shit, can be blocked. And when it's blocked, our channeling ability is very small, right? And it, it comes out maybe just a dripple, just a little bit. And it might even be contaminated because it has, the pipe is calcified, for example. And it seems really hard to channel and bring messages through. And it seems like a writer's block or a creativity block. And you're just like, oh, why is it so hard for me to just let this information out? Why is it so hard for me to to speak my truth? Why is it so hard for me to create what wants to be created? Because you have the passion, you have the connection to source, but you might be in this place where you're like, it's just not coming out into the public. It's just not coming out into the world. I just have troubles manifesting what I'm dreaming. I see it. I see the vision. I see it all. I see the feeling. I know that this is what I'm meant to do. I know that I'm connected to source. Or at least I feel it in the deepest seat of my heart. But it is hard to have it come through. Something's blocking it. And this is where the inner work comes in. Where we're looking within ourselves and we're really seeing, okay, where is that block happening? Is that a physical block, right? Because the spine is our channel to the divine. When we are blocked physically, when we have aches in our body, we haven't been moving, we haven't been elongating our spine or feeling into flexibility, it's hard to channel. It's going to block it. Imagine like a, a water hose and there's a knot in it. <laughs> It's going to be hard to bring out any water. So this is why when I guide my clients through astral travel and through channeling, we always focus first on open up the channel physically with the little yoga exercises. Movement together with the breath. That's really important. That's what's going to open up your channel. And then on the other side, we also want to open up the channel energetically. And this is for, through the chakra system. The chakra system is basically describing our own energetic channel. And for each of the main chakras, I'm working with eight chakras, or actually nine chakras together with the earth chakra. And each of the chakras is governing a main area of your life. And I'm not going to go too deep into the chakra system, but one of the things that I'm also doing with my clients is clearing up the channel, clearing up the chakras, because we can have blocks in there. And blocks irrelevant or seemingly irrelevant to what we want to channel. You know, for example, you might feel really inspired to do a certain art piece. And you're sitting in front of the canvas and it's just not coming out. It just feels so hard. The water is just dripping <laughs> in small amounts. And it's super hard to bring it out. Or you've been wanting to write a book and it's just like, ah, oh, it's just not a natural flow. It's just not there. And you don't know why. So looking into your chakras, looking into, okay, how is my channel open? How open is it really? Because it's actually, it's pretty seldom that our channel is open at all times. It's actually also not very smart necessarily to keep our channel open at all times. Just as if you don't want to have the faucet running at all times. If you don't need it, if it's not necessary right now. If you want to conserve energy, 
it's important to keep the faucet closed, you know, protect yourself and really focus on opening the channel when you're ready to to be in the flow, to live in the flow. Because, you know, sometimes we are in situations that we don't want to give out our energies too much because it's unsafe or it doesn't, it would just, it wouldn't be appreciated. It would just be running down the drain. <laughs> it would literally drain us, right? So for those kind of situation, it's important to preserve our energies. So looking into our channels and seeing, okay, how open is my channel really? We can look into the root chakra, sacral, navel chakra, heart, throat, third eye, crown, and really see how can I open up each of these channels. And that's what I do with my clients as well. And then I also work with the star chakra that is outside of our body that is connecting us. I like to see it as like the Wi-Fi signal that's connecting us to different beings, different timelines, different lifetimes, our higher self, and so on. So it's important to also be aware when you do channel and you open yourself up to other beings that you want to channel, if that's like your higher self, if that is... um past life of yours or future life or parallel lifetime or if that's a certain person that you want to channel, maybe a loved one who has crossed over or a celebrity that has crossed over, um, you know, or if you want to channel from the universe, from God, from goddess. We want to make sure that we also end up saying that we establish a safe and secure connection so only beings from a place of love and compassion can enter our channel because this is another thing we might think that we are opening ourselves up to to spirit but it can happen that the source that we are channeling is actually not source consciousness it's actually not pure it's contaminated even though we thought it was pure you know, so again, intuition comes in, discernment comes in. And as long as you feel liberated and good and free flowing, and it comes from a place of love and compassion, you can be sure, pretty sure that it is coming from source consciousness. Otherwise, if it wasn't, it would feel restricting, it would feel limiting, it would feel heavy, it would feel ugly, dirty. And also I want to say this too, just because we might all be channeling from source consciousness doesn't mean that what we're channeling are the same messages or it's the same thing. The core of it is the same, the source of it is the same. But we all have different channels that are coming and looking at it from a different perspective. And that's the fun part about it. And that's the beauty of having so many people stepping into being a channel and not just channeling from the grid, channeling from the matrix, channeling from what other people have been channeling, but rather plugging themselves into source directly and channeling from that perspective because that's where your unique, authentic voice is coming through your unique and authentic creativity your your creative self-expression and that is what creates the new world that we want to live in imagine more and more people are channeling from source consciousness living their life doing what they love speaking their truth letting divine life force flow through them and give back to the world in love and compassion, I mean, that would be paradise, right? So I invite you at the end of this to really feel into your channel, to become aware of how often you are in the flow state. How often do you feel like the water is just flowing through you? the inspiration, the creativity, the messages. And it doesn't have to be something like, oh, I have to channel some extraterrestrial now, or it has to be something super out of the box. Not at all. Literally, you can channel a recipe. You can channel an art piece. You can channel 
a game that you play with your child. You can channel a compliment, a love letter that you give to your beloved. You know, anything that comes from the heart and that that comes from that source consciousness, that place that is connected to all that is, that's channeling. And you're doing it already. And I invite you to really become aware of those times. And when you are ready to open up your channel more and seek more impact in the world and shine your light brighter, I'm happy to support you in that as well. So you can always reach out to me, ask at hannahchristensen.com or on my website, hannahchristensen.com to learn more about the rebirth program that I'm offering where we really rebirth you into your higher self version and really open up that channel between you and your higher self so that that birthing process of the future reality comes easy and effortless life to you through you (laughs) to you first through you and then to you All right, that's it from me, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Sadnam.